Hey guys, this is David from Benchmark and today we're going to be talking about tilt sensors and RTK GPS equipment. We're going to be talking about what is a tilt sensor, where have they come from, we're going to be talking about the benefits and drawbacks of using tilt sensors, we're going to be talking about how to calibrate the tilt sensor on the S631 and I'll show you how to do that and we'll talk a little bit about how you can use that in your surveying as well. But first, let's fix this. <laughs> So this video is for guys who have a 7th generation RTK receiver or are looking to get one and they're looking to use tilt to speed up their workflow in the field. As you can see in this video we're going to put up on screen here, in the tilt race video that Nolan did, he showed that using tilt to pick up points in the field is almost twice as fast as when you don't use tilt to get those same points. So what is a tilt sensor in an RTK unit? Well a tilt sensor takes the HI measurement that you've entered into the pole and it adjusts your position on the ground that it reports based on the orientation of the receiver so that you don't have to plumb up a pole for every single shot. You can just angle the pole, get the tip in the right spot and take the shot that way. Now tilt sensors have been around for a long time so why are we just using them in GPS receivers now? Well what we have now is actually not the first generation of GPS receivers with tilt sensors. There were older receivers that had tilt sensors like the S321. Now the reason we didn't use those is because early tilt sensors used a magnetic compass to get the tilt. You had to spend about 30 minutes calibrating the receiver. You had to use one of these fancy brackets, put it sideways, spin it around, spin it back around, tilt it at 45 degrees each way. You had to let it sit there to just collect magnetic readings for a while. You had to do this per battery. And once it was calibrated, it'd be great, but the calibration process was so painful that no one really wanted to do it. Now the other reason people didn't used to use tilt sensors was because of magnetic declination. Now these tilt sensors with magnetic compasses were usually good to about plus or minus 15 degrees and what that meant was you could tilt your pole 15 degrees and get the shot but it also meant that as you approach 15 degrees magnetic declination like we see in Western Canada like you see in Northwestern United States the calibration would be impossible to do because the receiver would always have more than 15 degrees error in what it was seeing. Now the other reason people weren't using tilt sensors very much when they were magnetic tilt sensors was because the the tilt sensor required that magnetic calibration anytime you moved more than let's say you know 20 30 miles that whole calibration process had to get redone because the magnetic declination of the area would change and your calibration would go out the window. An inertial measurement unit or an IMU as, as people usually call it is the same type of technology that they use on submarines to get navigation and you know with with an expensive enough unit you could have a receiver that you could take indoors and it would take that RTK position use the inertial measurement to, to take it through and give you good measurements everywhere so IMU is the same kind of technology that's used a lot in the marine world a lot with submarines and when you lose that GPS position, it just uses the inertial measurements from the internal gyroscope to track your position until you get another uh, GPS position that it can lock onto. So in theory, with, a, with an advanced enough receiver and an expensive enough receiver, you could probably have a receiver that worked indoors, but pretty sure that kind of technology is not available to civilians. In any case, with an onboard IMU and live RTK data to calibrate that, that motion of the receiver, you can have a tilt sensor that gets you a couple centimeters on the ground and it's lightning fast. So tilt is great, but there's always a few risks. So the main drawback with using tilt is that it's gonna add about two centimeters to the uncertainty at the bottom of the pole. And actually, Nolan did a great video where he compared all the tilt accuracies all the way up to like 60 degrees or something, and I'll put that right here and in the in the description below so you can check that out and the other main drawback which isn't really a drawback it just forces you to be careful is that you have to measure your HI very very carefully we actually did a video on that just the other week here and that's because when you're using tilt to correct not just your vertical data but also your horizontal data it makes it so an incorrectly measured HI is gonna cause you pretty big busts in the field and you can't reprocess it you just got to go redo the job with all that said the tilt sensor on the S631 is incredibly easy to use, very easy to set up, so let's show you how to do that. All right, so we're out here. We got our seventh generation RTK receiver from Hemisphere GNSS right here. We got Field Genius Android up and running on this tablet. I got a fixed solution. I'm gonna show you guys how we can calibrate the tilt sensor real quick. So I'm just gonna hit this gear in the, in the top right hand corner and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm just gonna make sure my HI is set properly, which you can see it wasn't. I'm just gonna, I have a calibrated pole here so I can just see 1.8 meters is my height so I'm just gonna enter 1.8 meters hit ok and now I'm gonna click on tilt correction and I'm gonna turn it on 
Now you can see here, I'll just hit done. It's gonna tell me that I have to initialize my IMU. So I'm just gonna rock my receiver back and forth. Takes a couple seconds. Now you can see it doesn't say initialize IMU anymore. I'm good to go with my tilt sensor. So why do people like using the tilt sensor? Well, there's some really easy reasons. Like if I gotta get a shot like right here under an eave, well, that's usually pretty hard because you cut off most of your sky. But now I can tilt my receiver out and actually, and actually get a view of the sky here and have a much easier time. You can see I'm fixed. I'm fixed at 15 millimeters on, on the edge of this building here underneath the eave. It also does things just like general pickup. If I don't have to level up my pole, Nolan did that tilt raise video. We'll put a, it's right here. I can just put my pole down. I can shoot a shot and, and I'm good to go. I don't need to wait and level up the pole and hold it level while I get the shot. I can just put the pole down and go. If you need to get a point and someone's parked over your point, you can take your pole. You might be able to get it underneath if, if they've parked just on the edge here and you can still get an accurate shot. And also, if you're doing like a, a quick topo and you're trying to drive it with a quad or something like that, you can put the receiver on the quad, you can measure the height of the receiver to the ground on the quad, and you can drive it, and that tilt sensor will compensate for when you go up hills, when you go down hills, when you turn corners, everything like that. You're not misreading your, your topographic information just by reading straight to the ground. So if you like what you see here, you want to see more about the tilt sensor and Action, you can check out our tilt race video that Nolan did to show you just how much faster it is to store points with the tilt sensor. And if you want to see how easy it is to shoot a topo with the tilt sensor enabled, here's another video of him going out shooting a topo with it real quick. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.